Hi, this is the first of a number of shorter videos that I'm going to be making based on the Kama Sudoku expert in 10 minutes. And in it, I'd like to show you how you can use that annotation method that I explained in that earlier video to solve some of the typical problems that we encounter in Sudoku. My method is primarily aimed at identifying pairs. If you can identify hidden pairs in Sudoku, you can generally solve the puzzle fairly quickly. And this particular video is going to show one of the easier types of pair to recognize and will then show you how that, that will go on to solve the entire puzzle. Okay, here's another example from Will Short's 200 Very Hard Puzzles. And it shows you a particular way that my technique can be used to expose hidden pairs. Let's focus on this square here and you can see that there's a 9 and a 7 already in this row, sorry, this column. So that means that there's, because the, there are four squares already occupied, that this square and this square are either 7 and 9 or 9 and 7, which I indicate like that. That means there's now three unknown squares, which are 4, 5, and 6. So I could write them out like this, 4, 5, 6, but I'm actually going to take a shortcut because there's already a 5 and a 6 here. So that means that we know that this square is a 4. That means that these two squares are either 6 and 5 or 5 and 6. And here is the teaching example I want to show you. We now know that this is 5 or 6 and we know as it happens that this square and this square is either 6, there's a 6 here or there's a 6 here. That means that if there's a 6 here, there has to be a 6 here. If there's a 6 here, there has to be a 6 here. So that shows you that either this square or this square is a 6, which we can illustrate in the usual way the 6 and a semicircle around it and a 6 with a semicircle around it and the other square. Similarly with the row above we can show that either this square is a 6 or this square is a 6. That is a useful piece of information to know when we further decode the Sudoku puzzle. Okay. We've moved on a little bit in the same puzzle and I want to show you how the pair of sixes that we looked at just now is very useful in helping us decode this Sudoku puzzle. Now, uh, I'm not actually going to use that pair, I'm but I'm going to use a very similar pair in the these two squares here. And we have a, a 5 that has to be here and, or here and we have a 5 that has to be here or here. And that means in the same way as these sixes that there must be a 5 here or here which we indicate with the 5 with the semicircle paired with another 5 with the semicircle and there must be a 5 here or here which we indicate in the same way. Now what follows from that is actually extremely useful as you're going to see. Because there must be a 5 in one of these two rows these two squares there cannot be a 5 here because there is a 5 in this square or this square there cannot be a 5 here. That therefore means that there must be a 5 here or here. That it then follows that because there is a 5 there, there cannot be a 5 here or here, and so there also cannot be a 5 here because of this 5 in this row, and therefore we can only conclude that there is a 5 here. And this is where the notation method I have will make life very, very simple. You will see instantly that there cannot be a 3 here, so we can insert a 3 here and because there is a 3 here that must mean that there's a 3 here and now we know that because of this this cannot be a 9 so we can put in a 9 here we can put a 1 here we can put a 3 here do you see how easy it is now and this puzzle is essentially done okay here's a completed puzzle and I have checked it in the back and I'm happy to report that all the numbers are correct so we were successful. So just to remind you we used my annotation method to identify 
a pair of pairs. We knew that this or this square had to be a 5, we knew that this or this square had to be a 5 or a 5, and therefore we knew that this or this square had to be a 5, and this or this square also had to be a 5. This combination of numbers is sometimes referred to by Sudoku strategists as X-Wing. And in this particular case, the X-Wing was very useful in that it allowed us to verify confidently that this square up here contained a 5. And from then on, we were able to fill in the rest of the numbers extremely quickly using the annotation method that I showed you. I hope that you understood that uh, brief description and uh, that you'll be able to use that when you're solving your own Sudoku puzzles. If you can identify pairs of pairs like that, or X-wings, you will find it that much easier to complete some of the harder puzzles. Good luck.